U.S. Embassy warns of imminent attack in Russia. Diplomats urged American citizens to avoid gatherings. The U.S. Embassy in Moscow has warned that extremists are plotting to carry out attacks in the Russian capital within the next few days. The embassy is monitoring reports that extremists have imminent plans to target large gatherings in Moscow to include concerts and U.S. citizens should be advised to avoid large gatherings over the next 48 hours, the diplomatic mission said in a statement on its website. It urged Americans to stay vigilant and monitor local media for updates. The embassy did not provide any additional details about the alert. The alert was issued amid the ongoing tensions between Moscow and Washington. On February the 7th, the Russian Foreign Ministry summoned American Ambassador Lynn Tracy, demanding that the embassy cut all ties with three US-funded NGOs whose work was recently banned in Russia. The Foreign Ministry further threatened to expel any US embassy employees who will attempt to interfere in the domestic affairs of the Russian Federation, including subversive campaigns and misinformation in the context of the conflict in Ukraine and the upcoming presidential elections in Russia. Ambassador Tracy was issued a formal note which demanded that Washington's embassy cut all ties with these outlawed groups. Among other things, its website and social media should remove all mentions of the three. Moscow will act to prevent any subversive actions and dissemination of disinformation, up to and including declaring embassy staff persona non grata should they violate the Russian law, the statement stressed. An organization that is deemed undesirable in Russia has many of its rights suspended. It may not establish offices in the country or use its financial system and can't publish anything under its name. Individuals and entities are banned from doing any business with such groups in any Russian jurisdiction. The list of undesirable organizations is kept by the Justice Ministry. The current version on its website has 146 entries and was last updated in mid-February. Ukraine begins to destroy metallurgic enterprises inside Russia after oil refineries. New details have emerged of the Ukrainian drone attack on the Mikhailovsky mining and processing plant named after Varychev in the Kursk region, according to Charter 97 media outlet. This plant supplied raw materials to the Ural Steel Company, which in turn was a supplier to the armored vehicle manufacturer Ural Wagen Zavod. This event confirms that after a series of attacks on oil refineries, Ukraine is targeting metallurgic enterprises, the agency writes. The first drone hit a fuel tank and a fire started, the company said. The Mikhailovsky Mining and Processing noted that there were no casualties. TASS writes, when doctors and firefighters arrived at the plant, the plant was attacked by a second UAV writes MASH. Governor Roman Starovoit said that no one was injured in the second attack either. Mikhailovsky Mining and Processing is one of the largest iron ore mining and processing enterprises in Russia. It belongs to Metallo Invest Company of Alisha Usmanov. In 2019, Metallo Invest published a release stating that the mining and processing plant produced a batch of iron ore pellets to the Ural Steel Company. As Proect wrote, Ural Steel supplied sheet metal to the manufacturer of tanks and other armoured vehicles, Ural Wagen Zavod. In 2019, Ural Steel also belonged to Metallo Invest. The company was sold in 2022 to Zagorsk Pipe Plant. In December 2023, the Mikhailovsky Mining and Processing was already attacked by a drone. Then, the UAV damaged the power supply lines of one of the plant's facilities, but the plant itself continued to operate. Metallurgic enterprises have likely become a new target for Ukrainian drones in Russia. On February the 24th, the Novolipetsk metallurgic plant, the products of which, according to the project, are used for the production of weapons, military equipment and machinery was attacked. Since the beginning of the year, Ukraine began regularly striking Russian refineries, with which Bloomberg linked the reduction in oil refining at Russian refineries by 380,000 barrels per day by mid-February. Other fuel infrastructure facilities are also being attacked. For example, four days ago, a drone apparently tried to attack the strategic Rushi oil depot in St. Petersburg. 
The Ukrainian armed forces ousted the invaders from the village of Tonenk, west of Avdiivka. Build Tabloid reported this. According to the publication's analyst Julian Repke, Ukrainian troops have regained full control over the village, but the occupiers are firing at it with artillery. Earlier, Repke wrote that the Ukrainian armed forces are having difficulty holding the defense on the line Berdikai, Semyonovka, Orlovka, Tonenkoy. The founder of the conflict intelligence team, Ruslan Leviev, also reported about heavy fighting in this direction. Our military is heroically resisting and trying to repel the enemy from the occupied lines, said Captain Ilya Yevlash, a spokesperson for the defenders in the area. A spokesperson for the Tavria group of forces fighting there said they were managing to build tank trenches, ramparts and bunkers but these were isolated, not contiguous. It may not have been a coincidence that Ukraine's military announced record spending on fortifications in the Zaporizhia region on the southern front. Russian troops claimed to have advanced marginally at many points along the battlefront in Donetsk. Another advance was confirmed in the village of Novomykhailivka. Geolocated footage published showed Russian forces in the field south of the settlement.